sin destroys. It is a destroyer. Don't sin. Because if you start breaking the covenant of God. And God will let you do it. God will not make you do it. You have to choose to walk with Jesus. Come on. God choose to walk with Jesus. And where Jesus is ladies and gentlemen. There's blessing. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's everything that you need. Everything in this life. The devil wants to get you sick and down and depressed and in the pit. Because he knows if he can do that, he can stop you in your ministry and your calling before the Lord. Because every ch single child of God has a ministry and calling of the Lord. And it's all different. Some are called to be up here to preach. Some are called to do their preaching out on the sidewalk. Some are called to do it on the job. Some are just to be a light inside their home and to pray on their knees for family members and relatives and associates and neighbors and all these things. Every one of us has a different calling. Every one of us has a different calling. Turn to somebody and say, you've got a calling and so do I. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Revelation 21, 1 through 3 says this. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more seed. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, or the dwelling place of God, is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. Oh, hallelujah, saints. Oh, hallelujah. So we see God is not hiding from you. He desires a relationship with you that is personal. Personal. Get by yourself. Your prayer closet may be your car. Some of you may drive 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or whatever it is to work. And you can listen to the radio. You can put on praise music. You can listen to CDs. But it's a time where you can talk with God. You've just got to remember to keep your eyes open. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me. When I first came back to the Lord... I could not get enough of the Bible. It was like I had wasted 40 years of my life. And now, and everywhere I went, driving in my truck, I had the Bible laying in the steering wheel. It's wonder I didn't kill myself or somebody else. God protected me and them too. Had mercy on us. God is not dead. He's on his throne and very much in control of his creation. Yes. Faith in God's truth will set you free. Can you say amen? John 8, 31 through 32, Jesus there, therefore said to those Jews that had believed on him, If you abide in my word, then are you truly my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes, yes, yes. The truth shall make you free. God watches over his word to perform it. Let me say it again. God watches over his word and if we'll speak his word out of our mouth, he says, I watch over that word. That's my word. Even though you're speaking it, child, son, daughter, you're speaking it. But it's my word. And I make my word perform things. God says, my word never fails. And if it doesn't happen in the first instant or the first day or the first week or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's God's word and God will bring it to pass in the fullness of time. Say in the fullness of time. In the fullness of time. One thing that my wife prayed over our children. Lord I want them to come back to you. But I don't want them to just come. And be a bench warmer. I don't want them to come. And just be an occasional Christian. I don't want them to come. And be one of the chose, uh, frozen chosen. When they come, Lord, even if it's longer, I, when they come, I want them to come full bore, all the way. I want them radical for you, Lord. Well, you wait till my son gets here. I mean, me and Gene, our mouths are dropping open. That's coming out of my son's mouth? Lord, he's in a Baptist church over there, and they're all dropping their mouths. From the preacher... To older men, men who are millionaires, they're all like, wow. 
You want to tell everybody to be here that day, September 2nd. Because I asked him to come. And he said, I'll, okay, Daddy, I'll come and speak. <laughs> oh, you don't want to miss it if you can. You want to be here. God says this to you. What says it? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith which we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. What will happen? You'll be saved. You'll become the child of the most high God. He says behold I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens that door to your heart. He said I'll come in. We'll sup together. He with me and me with him. Will be one. That's the most amazing thing. That there ever is. Because God says when that happens to you. You are a brand spanking new creation in God. God's still in the creating business ladies and gentlemen. But he's creating children. Made in the form and image of his only begotten son. The Lord Jesus Christ. God is planning on a big big family ladies and gentlemen. Big family. Big family. God likes big because big is better. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Are you an overcomer? Amen. God says you are. Be one. Be one. Walk on the high places of God. Get out of the rut. All a rut is is a grave with the ends knocked out. Revelation 7, 13, one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are those which are arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And he said, Sir, you know. He said, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Oh, yeah. Will you go? Or is the great tribulation going to come? Are we going to get raptured and go off to heaven? Nope. Sorry. Well, preacher, you're not preaching like all these other preachers on television. They've got all these reasons why the rapture happens before the tribulation. And I say, They're wrong. They haven't read Jesus' words. I may be, uh, I might, I've been working on redoing that PowerPoint about the rapture. So that it becomes very, very, very clear by the scripture that you know exactly when the rapture is coming. Because Jesus told us exactly when it will happen out of his own mouth. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. We're going to have a wonderful time with Jesus and the Father. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Life changing. But praise God you can experience parts of it right here now. Which we did just a moment ago. When I begin to worship God. I do, his love comes down upon me so much I start crying and I'm not putting on I'm not saying it because I just have fallen in love with my Lord absolutely head over heels in love with God because the further I go the more I walk with him I discover how much more every day his love is for me and it's like it's a continual it's, you ever look through one of these little things called kaleidoscope and every time you do like that, it's a whole brand new picture. Well, think about those angels that fly around the throne of God. Every time they make a circuit, they see something so brand new, so awesome, that they're crying out, holy, holy, holy. And at the same time, those angels, because of the powerful manifestation of the glory of God, they're having to cover their own eyes with the one, uh, sets of those wings. To look upon him. In his brilliance. And holiness. And purity. You see ladies and gentlemen. God is. An, as innocent. In his nature and self. As a newborn baby. I don't know if you've ever heard anybody say that. But that helps to give us a little bit of a picture. Of the very heart of God himself. And yet. Even though he's a consuming fire. He is love. Say he's love. Jesus is love. God is love. You want to be born again? If you've not been born again. We can tell you how to do it. 
so you can go to heaven and be with God one day. Do it today. Do it now. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 14, he says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go before you to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm planning on going to my mansion in heaven. It might be nothing more than a little log cabin, which I don't believe so, but it'll be, my log cabin will be made out of gold. <laughs> oh, yes, even the floor is paved with gold. Oh, my goodness. Anything in heaven is going to be awesome and wonderful and good. And it's a reality, ladies and gentlemen. I've been there one time. I've been there one time. And it's so amazing and wonderful. God keeps his word. I, I want to close this morning with this one thought. We're, we all got things going on in our lives that are there to frustrate us, to confuse us at times, to get us discouraged. And, 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 and like we was talking in the earlier slides about the wars and the diseases and the things that's going on in this world, it's all because of sin. Every bit of it's because of sin. But when we start looking at our situation or the situation of that person that we care about so much and then it and it almost just tears us to pieces we have forgotten to take our eyes off of that and look up to him and do, I mean they wrote a song about it Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. And if you ever want to know in your heart of heart of heart about what God has plans for this loved one or that situation or whatever, don't try and figure it out yourself. Do not try and figure it out yourself. Because God will blow your mind by doing it in a way that you have not even thought of. Because Gene and I have seen that happen in our family and loved ones before and over and over again. With We think it's got to be this way. And, that, and it happens. God answers the prayer. But it didn't happen that way at all. Not at all it didn't happen that way. It came around from a totally different way. And God just laughs at me. He says, Honey, child, see there? I did it. <laughs> God is, everything with God is possible. Trust God, amen? Trust Him, praise Him, worship Him, magnify Him. Fall in love with your God. He loves you. Amen? amen. Stand up. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am, I do. Might have to turn it back on again, but praise the Lord, we can take care of that right now. Testing. Te praise God. No. It's on? Okay. No, it's not on. Did I give her the wrong one? It's on. It's got a blue light. It's on. One, two, three. Well, that's mine. Testing, testing. Hello? All right, well, I guess I'm just going to talk loud enough where everybody can hear me. Um, this is a, a 911 call. What's uh, your emergency? Ladies, we're going to begin a prayer class. We're going to learn how to answer those emergencies. We have to treat every attack of the devil as an emergency. Yes. We've got to stop it immediately. We cannot give him any foothold. We cannot allow him a second of trouble we've got to stop him and ladies we're going to come together and we're going to learn we're going to study and meditate on god's word and learn how to apply it in our everyday life on 9 11 tuesday 9 11 we're going to answer the call to the emergency we're going to start our ladies prayer class and i'm just looking forward to what god's going to do with each and every one of us that's at night time 9 11 at night no, at 7 p.m. on 9-11. <laughs> okay, on, on September 11th, 11th yes. at 7 p.m. It's going to be here at the church. Okay, good.
God wants you, ladies and gentlemen, to be armed and dangerous. Amen. You got to know who you are. What did David say to Goliath? Does anybody know, remember what David said to Goliath? I want you to look it up and find me the scripture for what David said to, Eli, to Goliath. Because that's us too. That's us too. All right, grab somebody's hand. Garrett, I'm going to ask you to dismiss us, please. Excuse me.